Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Linux Lads. This is the only podcast that literally washes its hands because it actually has hands. Like the podcast itself has hands. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. Yep. You didn't expect that, did you? I, I, nor um, did I get the joke or the reference. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't really one in there. <laughs> <laughs> ha, gotcha. <laughs> so, uh, quarantine. We, we just have to get that out of the way. Yeah, we're all just sitting, stewing in our own juices. But the great news is there's lots of Linux things going on and uh, everyone's spending all their time indoors. So I found that like there's always quite a lot of news going on, which is great. Mike, what's been going on with you? Well, I'm actually more quarantined than uh, than than uh, more than than some other people because uh, my wife's tested positive. She's fine. There's nothing wrong with any of us, but uh, we cannot go anywhere, and that just basically not even you know you're allowed to go two kilometers far out uh, for oh, a wow. small exercise. You, we can't now. So you can't even leave the house. Like I can't leave the I can't leave the house now. Yeah. So uh, well, you know, it's it's not bad. Like there's people in much worse situations all over the place. So uh, yeah, I'm fine. We are we are fine, but. Uh, yeah, I I know the meaning of stewing in our own juices. <laughs> <laughs> Connor. Um quite recently enough, um I decided to give twin snakes a go on Dolphin. Um I have played it or I've attempted to play it on Dolphin in the past and maybe it was just there's been a lot of optimize optimizations um since then. But uh, it's been playing really, really, really well, and I can see that Mike is putting up his hand. Yes, I will explain. <laughs> um, so no, I was just, I was, I was just wondering why are you playing an old Nokia game in the KD file manager? But... Okay, so to explain what Twin Snakes is, is um, so Dolphin is a GameCube and Wii emulator. And Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes is a game that was released for the GameCube. And it is is essentially the first, it's a complete and utter remake of the first Metal Gear Solid game that was released for the PlayStation 1. So same story, same uh, absolutely everything, except it's using the more modern Metal Gear Solid 2 game. game engine and also the controls and one of the biggest things for me was the controls because um for a lot of people if you've ever played um original playstation um a lot of original playstation games sometimes the the uh, if it's especially if it's a third person game the camera is third person but also the aiming is is third person and not even the good oh, yeah not even the good third person as in the camera just goes behind the, the shoulder of the person so you're still able to aim no it's uh, you're spinning around on a, on a on a dial and it's like especially the original um resident evil games they're like yeah um, aim for this person who's approaching from this direction i'm like uh, uh, wh- wh- where is he where are <laughs> so but break uh, the laws of physics <laughs> yeah and then uh, in so in the and then in metal gear solid 2 is it's it's a third person game for moving around but then first person aiming so as soon as you press one of the the shoulder buttons it just goes into first person aiming which is which is brilliant and um yeah so um metal gear solid twin snakes is a remake of the first game, but using the second game's control scheme and game engine. So I've been enjoying that on Dolphin, and it's it's upscaling to um, 720p currently. Um, I haven't experimented with going up to 1080 just yet, but on my setup at the moment, upscaling to 720p, and it, it runs at a solid... Um, uh, I think it's it's... Uh, in-game 30 frames per second but you also see uh, a virtual for, uh, frames per second to notice what is actually running at and it's running at 60 frames per second on, at 720p on my on my computer so that's pretty good um Dude, but, i'm trying to follow here but you know my eyes are just it sounds over. a bit like uh it sounds a bit like half-life source when they remade yeah. uh <clears throat> half-life with the originals with the new source engine that half-life 2 was based on um that's uh that's black mesa 
no no there was a, a oh, valve uh, no but like the thing that valve did at the half-life source it was literally the exact same game but it was just a, a reskin uh, oh was like it okay retextured, retextured with the new engine or something but um yeah it was basically the exact same game in every way it just looked a bit nicer um but the black mesa is a complete remaster yeah i have it in my steam library i can't wait um so i'm off for a few days so i i, I don't know i, I kind of don't want to sit down and play it though because i know i'm gonna get sucked in and i'm gonna sit there for six hours and i won't get anything done so including to... the editing of this podcast hey uh, <laughs> yeah no exactly i have to do that first um it has to be the first thing i do um so uh so yeah that was actually the thing i was going to talk about as well so that that was a really nice unintentional segue uh um so onto the news um connor you stuck in a, a link there which is which is pretty cool um 21 must have apps for ubuntu um what took your fancy on that list so, so some of these as uh, i'm going down through here um some of them are very good uh shout outs and some of them we've even mentioned before like the the um epub reader the ebook reader we mentioned that previously um uh tilix uh, terminal uh, emulator i'm actually using this on on my current computer um on manjaro so it's it's not actually running on ubuntu but uh telex is a very good one uh only office is an interesting one um i have uh i think well, there is a i mentioned it in the news um later on there's a new release but um it's on the list here as well and i have been checking it out and it's actually uh, quite interesting so it's much more of a pared down office suite versus the full libre office um i'd imagine that you could probably do uh, a, a not quite as as many powerful things as you can do with libre office but it has vastly superior at least from my um estimation microsoft office support versus Lib- libre office it kind of l- emulates the look of microsoft office as well with the whole ribbon interface and the tabbed browsing and tab between your yeah. different uh, aspects I of it that. um so so you could literally if somebody's used to microsoft office you could literally plunk them down in front of this and they i'm sure they would barely even notice the difference and on their website they they do kind of a b comparisons between only office and LibreOffice or only office versus google docs or things like this and they say okay we've taken a, a, a microsoft word doc x file and then we rendered them in both and you can see how oh the text text doesn't quite wrap correctly in one of them whereas on only office it looks perfect and they do various uh, a b comparisons um but one thing they do, do in that test is like they say here's the original file if you don't believe us kind of have a look yourself so at least they're not saying oh look at our product isn't it great but please don't do the comparison yourself they're at the they they want you to do the comparison so um um, so that's uh, that's a good mm. aspect to that and it's uh, it's it's free. It's open source. It's it's available on GitHub. So, um, only Office is um is another Office suite for uh, another open source Office suite for Linux. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I'm looking for this. So, uh, oh my God, Ubuntu article uh, twenty one twenty one apps to install, and I have to say I agree with all of them. I mean, with all of the ones that I know, I've uh, been trying VS Code a little bit. Uh, it doesn't uh, stack up to Vim, in my opinion, and uh, as a, as an editor, and it's not as full featured uh, for Python uh, as uh, PyCharm. But uh, like the the extension ecosystem of VS Code is magnificent, and it's uh, it's an Electron app, but it feels really snappy and well put together. So definitely, I was I was I was actually using VS Code very recently. Um, I was dipping my toe again, and. Uh... Yeah, I actually used VS Code. That really stuck out to me, and uh, it's really nice for a luddite like me. It's, oh no, it's I, I know, nice. I know. Uh, like a lot of people, especially like younger people who who do serious stuff, use it because they, it's uh, it's uh, it's a good it's a good editor. It's not like a massively bloated IDE, but the the extensions there and uh, the overall experience for me a little bit confusing. Like what they do with the workspaces, I'm not too sure about, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good choice. Uh, flame shot, uh, I love flame shot. Like there flame is no. Looks cool, yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, I've that... been using that quite recently as well. It's, it's really good. Yeah, 
Of course, uh, Steam. Etcher. Sure. Etcher and uh, Connor's favorite, Yule Launcher. Yule Launcher, I used. I uh, that's one of the first things I install on pretty much everything. Um, the probably the only exception, and I think I've said this in the past, is when I um have in front of anything that uses um gnome as a desktop environment i just tend to use the gnome um, in both search rather than installing this in addition to it but um any gtk uh, based desktop for example i'm on cinnamon at the moment or if i'm on xfce or if i'm on mate or something like that anything uh, anything else that's gtk based i tend to install U launcher um i don't use uh, KDE that often but I, I would imagine that if it was on KDE I'd use um, KRunner because it's pretty much does the exact same thing so I, I wouldn't see the additional functionality of in- installing U Launcher on top of it as well but uh, yeah um, when I'm on Cinnamon as I'm on, on this desktop computer here U Launcher one of the first things I install because um, just uh, simple keyboard launch and then it, everything is there it's, it, and even does um some arithmetic and other things it's it's not just uh, for launching applications there's it's quite good with their extensive um uh add-ons or extensions or however they they call it um but yeah it's, i really like view launcher i i have to say i can't praise enough for Ophi, or i don't know how it's pronounced it's ROFI, ROFI, and uh it's similar to your launcher uh and uh it does obviously it runs uh it runs pros, but you can launch programs with it. But you also can. Uh, st- it works with the pass uh, password manager, and it works with SSH credentials and k- uh, keys. And it has an emoji plugin as well. So you can. Uh, basically, all I need to do to find an emoji is to type uh, my shortcut, and start typing like I don't know a grinning face, and a grinning face will appear. So, you know, uh, the most. Uh, uh the most the biggest uh advancement of humanity up to date uh and it's available in Rofi. Next up, Ubuntu twenty oh four scans fingerprints better. So this is another uh OMG article. Um don't worry Joey we'll mix it up eventually. <laughs> um <laughs> it's and this seems to be quite good because yeah and uh, any business laptop that i have um interacted with uh i have never really set this up but on my work laptop it does have the functionality to be able to read your fingerprint um and it you can imagine it's it's actually quite useful rather than um unlocking your computer and typing in your long big long password or something um you just unlock with your with your fingerprint and you'd imagine like how are they going to implement that if 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 you don't want to use Windows and you want to install um, Linux or Ubuntu or something like that? So, uh, I you know it, it it was never a problem that really occurred to me until I saw um, that that there's now improvements in twenty o four. But um, you you can imagine that it's it's de- it would definitely be something that people would use. And from the screenshot here, uh, it seems to be that they've written a nice uh, GUI. Uh, tutorial to to take you through this the um the setting up of of a of a fingerprint or to add a new finger or something like that. So yeah, it did from the same looks of things. Um, it does seem seamless, but it's not something that I've tried out myself. I've heard on Linux Unplugged, Martin Wimpress, uh, the head of the Ubuntu desktop team, talking about this, and uh, it's something that on Linux has never worked properly, at least in my experience, limited as it were. And uh, he said that what they did, they basically have got some kind of a translation shim that uh, uh, that translates uh, the input to the proprietary uh, format that is expected by the fingerprint readers because they are, uh, by and large, proprietary because uh, the companies don't want people to know how these things actually work. So it it was apparently a lot of work to make this work, but uh, it's it's great that it does now. And in more Ubuntu news, um, Ubuntu 2010 has uh, officially come out with its its code name. It's Groovy Gorilla. So insert your um, uh, Austin Powers references here. Groovy, baby. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I uh, some people have have pointed out that they they're more daring with their. Um, non-LTS codenames 
and it never really occurred to me. But um, I'm thinking back, they they could be right that um, Ubuntu tends to be more daring with their non LTS code names, or they tend to be more sensible with their LTS code names. But um, it m- might just be um, complete another coincidence. Oh, I don't know. I still don't know what Gazenial actually means, but uh, uh... <laughs> I'm not even sure what Yoan. E- e- Oh yeah, yeah. And then nobody, Owen, literally Owen. nobody, could pronounce that. Uh, Who's Owen? <laughs> <laughs> it's Owen? Yeah, I mean, at least Groovy Gorilla is. Uh, it looks like a step in the right track, I imagine. They just ran out of all the good alliterative animals very early on, so they, uh, yeah, they had. They, <laughs> that's the problem. Like they used all the good ones too early. Hardy, yeah, to be honest, Heron, etc. To, at Good least to they give didn't it. give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least they didn't uh, give up like Google did uh, with uh, with the Swedes, right? They they hit a hurdle there with Q, and oh, yeah. uh, they decided they decided it's all numbers from now on, which is a bit like, cowardly. Uh, yeah, they were just like uh, Raspberry Pi. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and they were just like, "Fuck it, just call it Q." <laughs> Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, there was one state, one where they they were they were running out of ideas, and everyone was like, uh, "Yeah, you should call it this." And they're like, "Well, we can't call it that because that's a, a brand name of somebody else." And then eventually, because there was, I think it was the pressure was too much. Eventually, they must have done a deal with that company, and you remember Kit Kat. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They did. That that I'm sure that Nestle had a had a Nestle, few yeah. few few a few uh, Bob coming from that. Uh, and speaking of Nestle, probably the most morally corrupt company in the world, and you should avoid them at all costs. Not that it's it's it literally is almost impossible because they own pretty much everything. But yeah, they're they're the um, oh. Uh, uh, Access to to fr- uh, fresh water is not a human right, or something like that, because they want they have they own a, a bottling plant and and want to give you bottled water. So they they, especially in in um, third world countries where these governments are easily um, influenced by money, they they're kind of kind of heavily kind of um, pushing on them in the direction of saying, oh no, what are you what are you talking about? Um, access to uh, to like fresh running water is not a human right. What are you on about? Like, yeah, seriously, fuck Nestle. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the, all these big companies. Like, there's so many shitty things they do that nobody really knows about. <laughs> like Coca Cola or Death Squads or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but uh, <laughs> allegedly, as Coca-Cola. they say on no destination Linux, yeah, allegedly. I definitely heard like Coca Cola and mercenaries in South America at some point on in the story. So it was like uh, mercenaries when they are in South America like to drink Coca Cola. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. Even mercenaries they, get thirsty. The, the big thing about uh, Coca Cola and, and PepsiCo, I think, is the same thing as well. There, when um, when Please there's don't in- sue us, Coca Cola. <laughs> when there's in- no, when there's increasing pressure on them to use uh, recycled plastics in their in their in their bottles, um, I think the some uh, PR person officially came out with the statement saying, "No, no, that that's not what consumers want. We feel that uh, consumers don't want recycled plastics." And we're like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no." They- they, they, consu- they, they don't want to give you recycled plastic uh, like in the form of the bottle. They want to give you a recycled plastic inside the bottle in its liquid form. And, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> do you, can, can you see where I'm going with this? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in case uh, anybody was uh, for the last half hour uh, not sure what we were on about, uh, Ubuntu 2004 came out this uh, this week. Has any of you guys uh, had the chance to try it? So so the past uh, half an hour has just been a solid beep. Because, yeah, yeah. Because like, re- like, or redacted. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck are they talking about? What's this 2004 thing? Yeah. Yeah, so have you have you guys tried it? Um, 2004, yeah, I have. Um uh, I don't don't know if I should plug my own shit on this, but considering it's it's kind of an experiment at the moment, is from do you know I've been always mean to um start doing videos of me installing various distos and me just talking about it. So on um on library or 
or how, however you're wanting to pronounce it I've just started putting out videos and they are all happens to be uh, coincidentally 20 minutes I uh, don't do any editing but I'm like at the end of the recording I'm like oh that turned out to be 20 minutes next one oh that turned out to be 20 minutes <laughs> so it seems to be that I consistently just talk for 20 minutes are you saying that your mouth is on a timer yeah <laughs> <laughs> probably but yeah I've released like a couple of them about two or three of them out there and if any I I tweeted the links any time that I I did release it. So if anyone is anyway half arsed inclined to check them out, then uh, feel free to check them out and yeah, also scro- get scroll past all the scroll past all the free speech warrior videos <laughs> just to get to. <laughs> yeah, and Connor, when you when you are when you are taking uh, when you are receiving your uh, you know when you are receiving your academy prize, just uh, don't forget to remember your humble beginnings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that's going to happen anytime soon. I mean, we have a lot of time, so we may as well, you know, s- you know, split the band, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't know where people take what, this. Like, the things are splitting up. Well, yeah, oh, <laughs> how come, how come nobody ever tells me these things? L- L- yeah, L- I can or, see. Lbory.tv is like the Yoko Ono of Linux lads, you know. <laughs> that's a you, reference. No, enough. no, no. This is wrong. Yoko is not. Uh, Yoko is not to be uh, to be credited with the split up of Beatles in this way. John Lennon was a was a bastard, right? And I don't want to go into it too much, but there is a book, po- there is a podcast episode of um, the You're Wrong About podcast, and they do this like they visit an old uh, affair or an old event, and they uh, attempt to straighten the record with actual facts, and. Uh, they had a few uh, few words about uh, about Yoko and uh, how a lot of it was John's fault, but the world just couldn't see it because uh, everybody loved John, so they had to blame her, right? Um, I anyway, believe that. I believe that. <laughs> I mean, it was the seventies or eighties or whatever. I don't, it was before my time, so it must have been bad, right? <laughs> so, Mike um, Fedora Thirty Two has been released. Oh yes, Linux, right? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, not to be overshadowed by Ubuntu. Uh, Fedora released uh, their uh, their their version thirty two. I've tried it briefly in virtual machine, uh, and it was good. Uh, mostly, I don't. I'm not too keen on the. I'm not too keen on the default uh, default theme, which uh, I think is the GNOME default. Uh, after using oh, uh, Manjaro, don't get me fucking started yeah. on, on, it's, it's, on, not, on it's, Wadia. it's not very nice, and I tried to turn it uh, dark. You actually you can't uh, you can't change themes. I didn't realize this, or maybe I knew it at some point. I forgot. You can't just change the appearance in a stock GNOME. Uh, like in the settings, you have to download GNOME tweaks. That's true. Which, I, f- I found that yeah. out the hard way the other day. And uh, that, that that just you know, so I downloaded the hard tweaks, and the only other option that appeared was Dark Advaita. I'm like, okay, well, better than nothing. Uh, but other than that, right? <laughs> I've got Yaru to- Dark as well. That's on Ubuntu, right? Yeah. You are on Ubuntu or something, so that's that's fine. But on Fedora, yeah, uh, you uh, only uh, Ubuntu makes sensible changes to GNOME. <laughs> Don't you know that? <laughs> Fedora is is like um yeah we just issue you whatever the um uh, we we received a gnome from on high from the sanctity of the uh, gnome developers many of whom I'm sure <laughs> are also Fedora developers and they're like yeah um it it's sacrosanct and we're going to issue you in, in its pure vanilla form um right. which sucks okay. To be I can. Frank. I mean. I mean. They are not. They are not. They are not alone in this, right? Debian does the same thing, and uh, both Def- Debian and Fedora change the background, and the default background in Fedora thirty two is stunning. At least I think so. It like the blue one with the blocks coming from a uh, bottom left. Amazing. Oh no, I'm, I'm clicking on the link. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I loved it. Uh, the you know of course like it's it's Linux so you can change the theme even though it's a bit harder in GNOME, and you can get something like I think Yaru now works on other distributions not just Ubuntu, uh so you can you can preload you can load it with Yaru and have a really nice looking desktop. Uh, the other more interesting Fedora news is that uh, Fedora is gonna become becoming preloaded on some uh, IBM Think. Oh, sorry, IBM. Well, that's a blast from the past. Lenovo mm-hmm. ThinkPads, right? Um, actually, I've never heard this, but you know, it's Lenovo ThinkPads. It used to be IBM, 
Uh, yeah, so I, I have heard somebody else making that link going, oh, wait a minute. So IBM now own Red Hat, which make Fedora and then um, yeah. ThinkPads used to be IBM. That's probably completely fake news. Please disregard anything I said in the last 20, 20 seconds. Uh, anyway, so there will be some nice ThinkPads uh, preloaded with Fedora. Uh, are probably for like workstation kind of situations where uh, like people who uh, use laptops professionally will be able to have this choice for people and organizations. Uh, apparently, again, I'm drawing on I think uh, Linux Unplugged again, where uh, the where some guy from Fedora was. I don't remember his name, and I'm really sorry, but he was saying that uh, it's gonna be a drop down when you are customizing the laptop that you are ordering. You would be able to select Linux, uh, Fedora, just like you would be selecting Windows 10 or something, and that's a really good news because uh, like the more the merrier. We've had a lot of these news coming recently from Tuxedo Computers that they are doing a Manjaro edition. Uh, before that, there uh, you know I think Zorin has got hardware. Uh, Zorin has got uh, Zorin has got hardware uh, uh, deals with manufacturers. Uh, so does uh, so does Linux Mint. I think Ubuntu obviously comes on Dell's pre-installed as well. So the more choice in this, uh, it's going to be that's fantastic. And apparently Lenovo were very keen on sticking to the open source ethos of uh, Fedora. So. I think this is just good news and that's really needed at this point. Yeah, I mean, um, it's this is certainly good news. It's, uh, Fedora would be something that I would necessarily gravitate towards. I have tried it in the past and I have tried, uh, what was the, uh, uh, was it Corora? I think it was Corora. Yeah. Uh, was the now discontinued distro, which was essentially Fedora, but more... Uh, uh, more uh, proprietary like codecs and and driver friendly than stock Fedora, but I think um Fedora is is now m- moved to be they're not quite as hardline on that anymore. Um, I think you the like if you're installing it on on something with an Nvidia um graphics card, like you might get a pop up saying, uh, like. We've detected an NVIDIA graphics card. Do you want to install this repo and then install the driver um, and then it's cut just a couple of clicks? Um, or you can completely dismiss that and just go with the, the Nuvo uh, free um, drivers for um, for NVIDIA cards. Uh, yeah, um, but it's certainly something great to see, especially a distribution that is coming from such a um a large linux company as as red hat and now coming from ibm um that's it's it's great it's certainly great to see and um i can never say anything bad about thinkpads thinkpads are just fantastic the keyboards are just so easy to type on so comfortable and they're so well built i mean it's usually a testament to how well built and thinkpads are is if you go on your uh in ireland it would be adverse study or gumtree or something like that but pick your your online classifieds of choice in your in your relevant country and um look up uh like a, a three four five year old um i or i could nearly said ibm a uh, Lenovo thinkpad and it would look the pretty much the exact same and there would hardly be any kind of scuffs or scratches or scratches on this at all it's it's it, it would look brand new and you'd be able to pick it up for like two or three hundred euro like they're probably used thinkpads are probably the best bargain you can you can get out there there, there are three IB or yeah, oh, I did it as well. There are three, hey, uh, it's, it's spreading like a virus, there, isn't there it? Are th- oh, oh. <laughs> there are three <laughs> Lenovo ThinkPads in my house for some reason. Um, I was I got two used f- for me and my girlfriend as uh, just daily laptops, and then my work laptop is a, a ThinkPad as well. So, um, so it's kind of confusing sometimes because. <laughs> Because they're all the exact same size. Like the the work one is a different model. It's a slightly better model, but like, yeah, it's very confusing sometimes. Because sometimes we will actually stack them. <laughs> so it's like, which one is mine? It's like finding a ball underneath a cup or something. 
uh, what you should do is you could um, just plaster your personal wood with stickers and then you'd be able to, <laughs> to stick. That's what I did. <laughs> Not <laughs> that I have so to distinguish it between my work and my, uh, my because my work laptop is a, is a silver HP and my um, personal laptop is a black uh, ThinkPad. So I, I'm quite easily able to distinguish between the two. But yes, my... my uh, <laughs> That's my, the thing um, ThinkPads. They, they, they look so uh, like the rubberized finish and... Uh, like they look so rugged and like capable and like I don't want to put stickers on it really. Like uh, I, th- I think maybe a few tasteful stickers, but it just I don't know. It just looks like such a solid, dependable device that I I don't know. Stickers seems beneath it. <laughs> well, yeah, I've I've stuck stickers in mine. Maybe a few. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe just a, a tasteful one in in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that, that, I was like, I, I, that sounds like I'm, I'm saying you're going to put a tram stamp on your on your laptop. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> that's what I, exactly what I thought. Born um, to be wild or something. Right? <laughs> so Vivaldi 3.0 has been released and now has a built-in tracker blocking, um, status bar clock, and more. So I um, because I'm I'm on. Uh, Manjaro and I've access uh, to the AUR so um, I just there's normally quite a number of updates anytime that I do um, updates and I do updates from the command line so sometimes I don't even notice when things have been updated so when I was like hmm I wonder am I running the latest version and I'm thinking you're, you got it from the AUR of course you are uh, <laughs> so I was like as soon as I read this I'm like oh I wonder am I running it yeah uh, yeah I am um so yeah, the uh, status bar clock is is a bit weird. Um, I I, I think in the the comments here in the in the um in uh, the OMG about uh, OMG Ubuntu article, they're um saying that oh maybe uh, Vivaldi are trying to go in the in the way of making an in, entire like operating system within a browser as in you oh you only live within the browser and you you're going to get everything you're going to get um your 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 clock and the clock seems to do kind of um alarms and reminders and things like that i mean they're like well why couldn't you get that from your your operating system (coughs) excuse me um so why couldn't you get that from your from your operating system and i suppose they do have a point um but some things are, are quite useful here. The fact that they, they now have the the um, tracker blocking, which, by the way, has been in Firefox for a while, <laughs> and uh, some other things. I mean, why would you use Vivaldi? Vivaldi is, is, is based off Chromium, but um, they're trying to introduce some of the really powerful features that the old Opera used to have. Do you know the way that Opera used to have mail and used to have everything like that? Whereas, uh, uh, like, it uh, has its own integrated kind of um, tools like a, a speed booster or, or for websites and things like that. So they're trying to introduce things like that. And they're, I think they're trying to make it more keyboard centric as well. Um, not saying that it's going to be the, the exact same as a full keyboard um, centric browser. Um, but they're trying to make it more suitable for power users. Now, the only downside I will say about Vivaldi is technically it's proprietary freeware but i think there's elements of i think individual elements are are it's uh it's it's a very subtle distinction because it's not open source software and it's not licensed under an open source license but i think individual elements of the browser are and some of them are like it's source available in other words if if you are the correct type of person and make a request or something and then you you get access to the source code of certain elements of it but then people are saying but that's not the spirit of open source um yeah. which they'd be they'd be correct in that so uh it's it's somewhere in the gray area of whether Vivaldi is open source or proprietary uh I think on the on the wikipedia page it's called proprietary freeware which does not exactly clarify things at all back, man freeware yeah wow. it's like it's like that's what napster was wasn't it uh, that's what people I've, used to call when i would talk about linux people used to say oh yeah freeware no <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah no. i mean 
there is there is a reason to use Vivaldi. They, uh, despite their uh, thing being proprietary, they are some kind of an enterprise where the workers own the where the workers own the, the company. I think so, which is in stark uh, uh, stark uh, opposition to like your corporate giants, the likes of Google or or Apple, who make who also make browsers, right? So. Uh, this if if you are you know there is there is a there is a social aspect to what they do and uh, if they feel that this is that proprietary software is the way they can keep the lights on and pay everybody and still become still be independent and uh, you know self owned then that's what they have to do so i i, I use firefox uh, for obvious reasons uh, at almost everything but uh, when compare compared between vivaldi and chrome i if i had to choose i'd go for vivaldi obviously um okay well just because i thought of it uh, vivaldi or brave which one would you go for because they're both chromium based i used to use brave for a time it was really fast i found yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I've evolved it because um, you know they uh, because of the self uh, It's it's but Brave is open source, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's uh, that. I would have to do some serious thinking and maybe testing as well. Are you probably actually Brave because it's open source and, but you know, I I'd have to think about it hard. Uh, Bra- if I Brave had a blockchain, Brave, yeah, they have. Yeah, this, they... Um, they have, oh, yeah, they, they have their uh, their brave uh, rewards. I think is is blockchain yeah, related uh, and it's uh, all together. Oh, right. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a token on the Ethereum network, I think, and it's uh, it's the BAT basic attention token, and it's kind of their model for advertising. So you um you mine this digital currency by basically looking at the person, the publisher's website, and you can generate digital currency just from people looking at your website. So it's like a new approach to uh to uh advertising revenue it's interesting but i don't know it seems a tad complex it's it's fascinating these things like both blockchain and and uh and advertising are fascinating topics but yeah i don't know what i would go for a uh and maybe maybe if i ever understand uh what uh, blockchain actually is and how it works <laughs> I, might be, I might give brave a try <laughs> <laughs> um, Brave, I'd have, I've used this. Um, Brave is, would probably be my second browser. So I have, I do have uh, Firefox as my main browser, and I do have Vivaldi and Brave, and I use them for for different um, for different reasons. Um, and but Brave would probably be my second most used browser. Um, like ninety percent might be Firefox, and like five to ten percent might be Brave or something like that. Um. One thing it break is it's really fast. Is um, it's uh, I would say it's actually probably faster than Firefox, and I'm not saying Firefox is slow by any means. Um, and it does have the Chromium um extension integration. So because it's based off Chromium, one thing I would say that's a, probably a downside against Brave is it's it's um syncing is sucks or it's practically non-existent i think they tried to, to come up with a, a a privacy respecting syncing um method but it's been broken for such a long time that they've disabled it and i think in the last two releases or certainly in the last um most recent release um it's in the flags you can re-enable it but it's it's dis- been disabled by by default and essentially what it means is they give you a string of twen- random 20 words and then you copy and paste that and you put that in the other instance. So you then have to have the problem of how do you get that string of random 20 words to the other instance? I mean, are, are you going from your, your desktop computer to your laptop? Do you email it yourself? And then... No, you and then, telegram you know, it to yourself. Or, or telegram it, yeah. Like, it's then there's there, that's the problem that you have to solve. They're like, okay, now how's, how's, it, where's the secure way of transferring it do i take a photograph with my phone and then do i have to manually transpose it from one thing to the other yeah it didn't really work so i think they're trying to see if they can um come up with a better solution but it's uh syncing is definitely a problem between um between brave instances at the moment uh one thing that i would say that Val- vivaldi is actually handled pretty well so vivaldi do does have a fairly solid um 
um, syncing. But again, it's just like uh, Firefox, it's um, linked to an account that is up on their server. So it depends on whether you trust them or not, which with Firefox, I, um, I, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt and I do use Firefox Sync quite uh, extensively, especially for my bookmarks and my um, add-ons, because once everything is synced and you, especially when you're distro hopping, install Firefox, sign in, then all your bookmarks start pulling down and then all my decades worth of freaking add-ons <laughs> start pulling down all at once and um, so i usually leave it for about five minutes to make myself a coffee they go back and eh, yeah my browser is synced so here's one for you e-links or ie6 what i missed that one here's one for you e-links or ie6 e-links the command line only browser or internet explorer 6 uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I probably have to. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> that's hard, man. Yeah, no, I don't think there's a solution to that conundrum because, like, you can use e-links, but it won't work on the modern web, or you can use IE six, and it just won't work. Yeah. So next up, uh, Manjaro now has a ZFS option or ZFS option in the installer, and snaps and flat packs can now be enabled in Pamac. Uh, Mike. Yeah, so they, they refreshed, obviously Manjaro being a rolling release, they don't really do big releases, but they refreshed the uh, downloadable ISO, and that's what they did, and now you can, uh, you have easy way of inst of uh, using ZFS on your drive, and an easy way of uh, using snaps and flatbacks. I'm a Manjaro user, a very happy Manjaro user, so every progress in, I, I, I'm really happy with the, with the project, I'm glad that uh, in the direction they are moving, I'm start start again. I'm really I'm really happy as a Manjaro user uh, about the project, and I'm glad to see that they add new features. And uh, if and when I get a larger drive, I might even give uh, ZFS a try. Yeah, just give me like a ten second primer on ZFS because I'm still not sure what it, what the benefit of it is like. It's you do snapshots, so it's it's you know you've, your extended for is 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 all right. It it works for most of our desktop user cases, but let's say that you update everything on your, let's say that you up you you start updating your distro and something breaks and it all shits shits the bed and uh, you reboot and you've nothing. Uh, I think the issue I've never obviously tried it, but with um, with these kind of file systems like ZFS and ButterFS. You can go back. You have snapshots of your data. You have snapshots of your of your system. You roll back, and you are as good as if the updates never happened. And uh, that's one of them. Obviously, they are very. They have features that are really good for people who or organizations who use uh, many drives in in RAID. If you have a data center, I think. Uh, yeah, there's there's a million features uh, for uh, from like desktop users all the way to the to the big uh, big data centers. Uh, if you there's actually a really good uh, new podcast uh, that uh, Joe Resington started. It's called Two and a Half Admin, uh, and it's him, Jim Solder from Arts Technica, and um, Alan Jude. And they've un they've one episode out, and they were obviously this being uh, Alan Jude and Jim Salter on the on the podcast. They have spent uh, some time talking about ZFS, and I'm sure they will in the future. So, if people want to know more, then uh, I think we can tell them about ZFS. That would be the place to go. Also, Tech TechSnap from Jupiter mm -hmm. Broadcasting would be a good place to go to as well. Um, next up, uh, final p piece of news, um, RetroPie 4.6 is released with Raspberry Pi 4 support, so uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, that's uh, that's pretty cool in that uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 is um, is quite well specced for, for a single board computer, so it kind of opens up more possibilities in terms of emulators, so uh, it's really interesting to see what happens there. Um, we'll link the blog post from RetroPie in the show notes anyway, but uh, you can read all about the changes in uh, RetroPie there. Um, so very, fairly subtle changes, but there is a few kind of um, uh, big changes there. They're, they're, it's now based on Raspbian and Buster rather than Stretch uh, for, for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so uh, there's a new kind of notification system uh, support for real cd-rom which is pretty cool um i'm assuming that means you can hook a usb c cd-rom drive up and dump the disk image of uh your your old cd-rom games 
which would be pretty badass. Um, and uh, yeah, there's actually like an achievement system, uh, retro achievements, which is pretty interesting. Um, have you guys ever actually uh, you like used RetroPie or put it on a Raspberry Pi before? Um, well, no, I, I've I don't own a Raspberry Pi, so I've never actually done it. But um, I think in 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 some of our stuff that we've done in real life, um, uh, we did have a couple of events where we had a Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. So I th- think we were we had some N sixty four games and some various other things running on 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 RetroPie in the in the past. But yeah, it's a it's a very interesting project and um. Uh, long may it continue and that's, this seem, does that, seem to be a fairly right, actually, good update yes. i remember us with that raspberry pi and all those uh, uh legally obtained games that we were playing on it um, um yeah we we owned all of the original cartridges for all of those games exactly we we did so that kind of wraps up the news uh we have one event to shout out which is which is pretty cool um in these eventless days um Open Suze Virtual Summit, uh, which is pretty cool. So they're going to be doing a virtual summit online. Um, and this uh, is taking if you're really into th- Open Suze, why not? This is taking place on the first to the second of May. So this is probably in a round when uh, this is going to be released. This episode is going to be released. So um, we're a tad bit late, but uh, anyway. Um, it's always good to get the information out there. So maybe if you're planning on, if you're near and you hear this on the first and you might be able to make it and you might be able to make it on the second. So so it might be just in time. Um, but yeah, sure. it's, it's, always, it's always good to have these virtual, virtual summits. I'm sure there'll be recordings as well. Yeah. So uh, we come to the final chapter. Um, as usual, you can reach us on all the, the usual usual socials. They're going to be linked in the show notes. Uh, you can find all our details on linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Um, you can get us on Twitter at linuxlads. You can email us show at linuxlads. Um, if you'd like to throw us the price of a coffee or a beer, you can do that linuxlads.com forward slash support. Um, as usual, I have been Shane. I have been Connor. And I've been Mike. Until the next fortnight. Adieu. Adieu. Bye. <laughs>